Alright everyone, once again, new week, new odyssey. What have we got this time? The Poppin' Bloons. Okay. Intriguing. It's not an extreme odyssey, so it's already kind of nice to us. Although there are some seemingly difficult maps towards the end. Captain Churchill seeks balloon destruction. Will you help? Alright. Let's see what these islands have for us. Hard standard. Hard magic monkeys only, okay, so we're gonna need to pick out a handful of magic monkeys for Adora's has temple. I can't speak, I apologize, and I'm also feeling a little under the weather. Don't worry, I've got tested, came back negative, we all good. I'm just regular sick. I'm not premium sick. Anyway, uh, haunted military only, ooh, okay. Standard, four to 80 on cargo, not bad. And military only hard on peninsula. That could be difficult, but we're going to need to pick a crap ton of water towers for that one. We're going to need a lot of boats and definitely a plane or two. We might even farm with some boats on that last map, because that sounds like pain. Alright, let's see exactly what we're left with. I'm assuming Captain... Sh yep, the only hero. I figured as much. If he was being referenced so much. Ooh, and only 12 monkeys max. Alright. What are we allowed? Oh, beautiful. We literally can't mess this up. Well, I mean, we could, but not easily. So Ninja Alk Wizard can probably solo most Magic Monkeys only, right? Oh, there's only one Magic Monkeys only. Okay, so yeah. Ninja Alk Wizard. Can that get to 80 Magic Monkeys only? I'd say it's close. So I'd, I'd throw in something else here. What else do we want? Uh, maybe another ninja. Anyway, that should cover it, I would say. Or maybe another wizard instead. Either way, we should be fine for that. Let's sort out our military. I want at least three boats. Two planes, two snipers. Honestly, I don't use much of the other military monkeys. Like, aside from these four... I don't really touch the mortar, the the heli, or the darling gunner all too much. Even though they're all great towers, in their own right, and in their own time, it's uh, it's not really my my speed. Anyway, I don't know why it's rearranged them like that, but I think that's what we're gonna go with. Yeah, that seems. Well balanced. Alright, let's go. So as usual, we've got five days to complete the event. Part one is being released in this form video today. Part two, as always, coming tomorrow. Also, I've just realized we've got Captain Churchill. That's not insanely good for early game, but mid to late game it's a lot better. So that'll be handy at the very least. Okay. And as usual, we're not going to play with any monkey knowledge, just so more people can uh, look to this as more of a guide, rather than just me doing it with all the monkey knowledge and flying through it easily. But as usual, if you do want any sort of monkey knowledge recommendations, the number one monkey knowledge, at least in my opinion, is by far Mana Shield. It'll give you 25 extra lives, and if you lose any of those 25, you don't need to worry, because if you just stop losing lives for a few rounds, they start re coming back. So you're all good. Um, by far, what I consider to be the best in monkey knowledge. At least for uh, for beginners to the game. Actually, you know what? For everyone. For everyone. There's always times when someone's going to lose lives. And the only time that actually matters is in chimps. When you uh, can't exactly get extra lives. Or in impoppable. But even then, there are other monkey knowledge upgrades that help you save a few lost balloons, at least not like ceramic levels, but you know, you get the little spikes at the end of the track, super helpful. You get the free dart monkey, also incredibly helpful. But uh, yeah, by far, mana shield for everything else. Especially Odysseys. They rarely put impoppable in chimps mode into Odysseys, so I would highly recommend getting uh, mana shield especially so if you're an Odyssey farmer like I am. Honestly, I, I love the Odysseys. I recently found out that I've actually completed every single Odyssey 
that's been released for this game. Definitely not for BTD5. Oh god, no, not for BTD5. But, um, yeah. I mean, so far, every Odyssey is currently under my belt, at least completing it on hard mode. I don't really bother for the easy and the medium because you don't get the trophies anymore after you complete it once. Alright, and then we get our usual alchemist up and running, and we're good to go. And I was asked a very weird question recently. Like, it's it started off with regular questions, like what was my favorite what's my favorite tower in the game? My favorite tower, by the way, is the ninja. Um Excuse me just one second. Alright, just had to cough up a lung. Um, but yeah, I was asked what my favourite tower was in the game, and I said the ninja. And then I was asked what my favourite hero was in the game, and I said it was Oban. And that was all well and good. And then I was asked what my favourite upgrade in the game was. And I've never been asked that before. Ever. <laughs> and I eventually came up with the answer of Crossbow Master. Just because I, I seem to get it in every game that I've possibly can and it's just so good hitting those massive crits getting that crap ton of pierce and the fact that it can solo around 63 is pretty nice don't get me wrong there are definitely cheaper options to solo around 63 but I don't know it just seems I feel like it's the upgrade I get most often in the mid game like early game it's most likely just ninja top path that I get most often or should probably get down uh, Churchill, huh? Either either Ninja Top Path or Banana Farms are probably what I get most often. No, oh, I forgot I got the cute little drone thing. I was wondering why I chose this skin. I don't particularly like this skin, but when the drone's like flying all around the map, it makes it so much better. And I love the little flying pets too, like Admiral Brickles. Pi uh, little pirate skin parrot pet is just amazing. I love all the flying ones because they literally just sort of go wherever the hell they want. They're not like restricted to being close to their hero or their uh, their tower. You know, like the ninja's pet is restricted in that uh, it can't cross the track. You know, flying pets obviously can, they just fly over it. But for some reason, the little kiwi here is not going to cross the track ever, so it'll always stay in this little smiley face area of the pumpkin. But, uh, yeah, I, ju I just love the flying pets, they're so adorable. And they just do whatever the hell they want, they don't really div give a damn about anyone else. <laughs> it's so cute. Uh, Alright. But, we get that, and then we get two in the middle. And we should be good to absolutely shred. For the most part. Um, I don't really use Churchill all that often, but uh, he's a pretty pretty good hero if you can find him a good spot to line up sort of uh, massive rows of balloons. So like, if, if when the balloons get to here, he's just gonna shred through them and hit a little bit of the track over here. So it's, it's not the perfect spot, not by a long shot. But, uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Alright. Up next, I want to make sure, even though all of these things on screen can eventually... Oh no, the alchemist can't. Yeah, that's that's exactly why I'm placing this shimmer wizard. For the alchemist. <laughs> but yeah, even though most things right now can already see and pop camo, I, I, just, I just like getting myself a bit of a Prince of Darkness. If I can help it. But yeah, I think we're going to be absolutely cruising with this. Uh, at this point forward, you could probably just save up for the Prince of Darkness and buy that out, right? But, as usual, my first Odyssey video, I never... I never edit it. Or at least I try not to, just because we're, we're trying to figure out what's going on, but this seems like a fairly basic Odyssey. You know, it, it's, it's a simple premise. Just make sure you choose enough towers from each category to survive. And you'll be all good. Oh, and I forgot that we're actually going to get Churchill on Adora's Temple. Oh, no, we'll be fine. Yeah, no, we should be fine. Because essentially, this is what we can run. This exact 
set up right here, this is exactly what we can run on the Dora's Temple. Because I haven't placed a single military monkey yet. <laughs> I must admit, I am biased towards the magic monkeys. I do love me some good magic monkeys. Don't get me wrong though, if you allow me to have banana farms and you're not like forcing me to pick them and take up a slot, like like in the Odysseys, I will a thousand percent just fill up the entire screen with banana farms every chance I get. You know? Even if it means I'm very close to losing on some rounds, I'm very much a risk versus reward kind of person. Not to say that I'd be into gambling. I'm into gambling when it doesn't lose me money. So, you know, gambling in games with virtual money, I don't care. Because that, that it, it, it's not real money. It's not taking money out of my wallet. It's not, you know, taking food off my plate. It's just fun, and it's fine. Or, even better, gambling with other people's money. Not to say you should steal other people. No, that's, that's terrible. You shouldn't steal other people's money. But if they offer it to you to spend on gambling, and they're not going to just outright give you the money unless you spend it on the gambling, then you may as well. I don't know how I got onto this topic, but anyway. Um, we're looking pretty crazy. We're about to get a Prince of Darkness, which is going to seal the deal for us. Prince of Darkness is insanely good. Like, it's, it's kind of crazy. And recently I did play a match where I had Prince of Darkness next to Oban, and I didn't realize how much of a buff Oban gave the Prince of Darkness. Like, it was insane. Like, I was seeing the Prince of Darkness just solo some rounds, and I was like, hold on. Surely it can't be that strong against DDTs. And yet it was. It was, it was crazy. Because I, I recently tried to get the Cornfield achievement, where you need to beat chimps without removing any of the corn. And it, it really pissed me off, because I got to round 100. But I couldn't beat round 100. I literally beat every other round, including 99 and 98, but somehow I just could not beat round 100. And I was rocking a Prince of Darkness, uh, Avatar of Wrath, five other druids around him, and Oban. And then like a crossbow master in a, uh, what do you call it? Ultra Jug, just because I could fit them in the cheesy spots on the map. But yeah, it was like insanely strong. I didn't think it would make it that far. But then, of course, when it lost around 100, I was still annoyed. But yeah, damn. I didn't think it would be that good. But it really is. <laughs> like, it's it's taken out this round pretty pathetically. Pretty pathetically? No. It's making this round look pretty pathetic. That's, that's better wording. But yeah, we can kind of just sit back now. Just sort of sit back, relax, watch... Have a cup of tea. Use use Churchill's abilities just for the hell of it. Because realistically, we don't have to do much. I mean, look at him. He's taking on rainbows by himself. Admittedly, the Sarams need a little bit more assistance from other towers and whatnot, but we should be fine. Actually, no. We'll, we'll, we'll try to speed this up. So let's get ourselves a sniper. Go for our elite defender friend. Our elite defriender. And we should be able to smash out the rest of these rounds fairly quickly. Yeah, there we go. So the only thing the elite defender can't pop at this point is leads, but that's fine because that's what my Prince of Darkness is for. And literally everything else on the field. <laughs> Can everything on this field pop leads except for the. Yep. Yep. Everything on this field can pop leads except for our sniper. Which is pretty funny, because snipers are known for their high damage, high caliber, single shot fire. You know? You, you, you think of a sniper, you think high penetration, like, can go through three buildings and then still take out its target. But, uh... No. It's the only one here that can't. We've got a wizard sitting in a chair. That can pop leads. We've got a ninja with some poisoned, poisoned shurikens, that can pop leads. 
We've got an alchemist that's just throwing acid. That obviously can pop leads. And then we've got a tank. I would be devastated if Churchill couldn't pop leads. <laughs> uh, oh well. We're still looking good either way. And I think we're about to wrap this up quite nicely. We didn't even need to place these guys. I'm just kind of placing them now for fun. Just realistically, we could have done this with just the uh, the pod. Prince of Darkness and the uh, the Magic Monkeys and Churchill. But at the same time, it's, it's always good to speed the process up. So you may as well go for overkill. And we're getting close to the finale. Just one more round. What's everyone else's favourite tower? Mine's personally the ninja just because it was the tower I spammed a hell of a lot in BTD5. And even though it wasn't like the super greatest tower of all time in BTD5, I still loved it. I still loved it and I don't know why. But it, it's just kind of stuck with me as my favourite tower. So what's everyone else's? I'm, I'm intrigued. Oh hey, look at that, 50 lives. We didn't lose a single one. Beautiful. All right. Sorry for that, everyone. I just had to help my mother with something, uh, but we should be all good now. Right as I finish saying that I don't edit my first part videos. <laughs> Classic. Uh, anyway, are we good here? We might be. This is a difficult map to try and do with minimal towers. And for the most part, I do like to start off with placing things at the bottom here, but I have... Ooh, one life lost. Yikes. Um, I have done this map before with, I think, just two towers. Maybe even one. No, not one. Definitely not one. But I've done this map before with just two towers, maybe three. I don't quite remember. Um, but yeah, so it shouldn't be too bad to do this with Ninja Alk and Wiz. Especially with Churchill as well. Backing us up with the extra firepower. Um, and Seeking Shuriken should make this easy. Oh yeah, much better. Anyway. Um, what was I saying? I don't remember. But yeah, I'm, I'm interested to know what everyone's favourite hero, tower, upgrade even, is their favourite. Because I, I was genuinely surprised by the last question. And I'm, I'm quite intrigued that there's a there's like a big variety of answers, you know? Because some people say Etienne's the best hero, which, by all means, I'm not I'm not hating on Het Etienne at all. I love Etienne. Etienne's great. I just prefer Oban. I'm, I'm just stating that right now. But, uh, yeah, I, I kind of want to know everyone's, everyone's favourite hero and why. The and why is important. Because you can't just say, oh, yeah, my favourite hero is... Quincy because there's a definitely there's, there's a definite big why involved there <laughs> don't get me wrong Quince, Quincy's a brilliant hero like a lot of people hate on Quincy but I, I do love him he's not my favorite not my favorite and by far not my most used but uh, I've definitely used him more than some of the other heroes which some people may find alarming <laughs> Ooh, okay, we're good, we're good. Okay, there we go. So, a little bit of a shaky start. We lost one life, but admittedly, we're doing pretty damn well. We're certainly not continuing the trend of losing lives, at least not yet. Could happen, but we'll see. Hopefully not. Um, but yeah, we should be all good. Good. I've been playing a crap ton of Stardew Valley recently. I don't know if you guys have ever played Stardew Valley. If you have, then you know exactly what I'm talking about when I'm saying that like I'm, I'm very much invested into the game now. But uh, if you haven't played Stardew Valley before, don't. Don't. It'll, it'll take up way too much of your time. And if, if you're already busy, that's the last thing you need in your life, is Stardew Valley. God damn. <laughs> it's honestly crazy. Alright. But yeah, just, 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 just be warned that if you do ever buy Stardew Valley or you see it on sale and think, oh, that'll probably make a fun game. 
Whilst you are correct, it will also take up a hell of a lot of your time. Or at least it's taking up a hell of a lot of my time. I am a little bit addicted to it. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I've, uh... I've been, I've been watching other YouTubers play it. And like all the tips and tricks and hidden secrets and things like that. And I was like, ooh, ooh, I have to go figure that out for myself. Oh god, you're right, I forgot about Oban. Oban? No, Churchill. Churchill. Churchy. Churchy, churchy. Where can I put him? He can't fit up on this top section because he's too thick. He's too damn thick. Alright, screw it. We won't get him. At least not yet. I want to get Blunjutsu. I want to feel safe. Okay. Now, where the hell can we put him? He's gonna have to go down on a second step. Which I immediately don't like, which because it, it, it limits his range. But he's gonna have to. Maybe down on this side so we can still get the Alk buff. Or do we put... Oh, maybe we put him down towards here more. So we can get more... You know? Up the... Uh, up the lanes. <laughs> Don't know why I used a sound effect there. But, uh... Yep. I'm, I'm definitely not... Like, uh... I'm not that technically skilled with uh, my editing software to be able to put in sound effects. And so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna make them myself. Uh, when, whenever I whenever I feel like putting them in. So be warned, <laughs> that's probably gonna happen quite often. Um, but yeah, Stardew Valley's a uh, certainly an investment. You'll definitely get your money's worth out of it if you are invested in uh, those types of games, like farming simulator type games with. Uh, Cute little background story like Animal Crossing. If you're into Animal Crossing, you'll most likely enjoy Stardew Valley. Same with, uh... oh, what was the other one? The other popular one, Harvest Moon. Never played Harvest Moon. I imagine it's very similar to Stardew Valley, though. And same with my time in Porsche. Yeah, I've seen gameplay of that. My sister's got it, but I've never played it. Um, but I assume very similar. Once again. Oh, how are we looking? Ah, oh, smoked. Easy. Easily destroyed. Alright. Let's get a wizard. Um, here. There's no really heavy camo rounds, and most things that we place are going to be able to see camo anyway. So I guess we'll just place the wizard for the Prince of Darkness. So it doesn't really matter where we put him, just so long as we do put him somewhere. Alright, and yeah, pretty much the exact same strat that we worked with last time, because it works, so why would we not? Kind of, kind of makes sense. And I do love this now, because technically the up and down and the left and right of the middle of the track, or well, the little, I guess, the, should have said the plus sign in the middle of the track, all, all parts of it counts as track, right? But I love the fact that now... Depending on the round, the balloons get sent up and down, or left and right, because that's where they'll actually go. Whereas, uh, in previous updates, it just sent them all over the place, because it's like, oh, this is track, and this is track two, and this is technically track as well. And so it kind of ruined the damage of, uh, Unpopped Army and Prince of Darkness by sending random revived balloons just down this way for no reason. Uh... Don't get me wrong, I mean, it would still sort of hit over a little bit, but just in general, it wasn't, uh, wasn't the greatest way for things to be planned out. Okay, but so far, so good. I mean, just like last time, we don't have the greatest positioning in the world, but looks like we've got enough for it to, uh, at the very least work out well. So, I think we're good. And this ALK buff seems to be working extraordinarily well. Uh, I think... I think it was H-Bomb. Might have been H-Bomb. Might have been someone else. But, um... Apparently, Perishing Potions is better off as a cross path if you've got two or less towers to buff. 
And then faster throwing is better if you've got more than two towers to buff. Um, but yeah, that's, that's just what I've been working off recently, so... I don't necessarily know how accurate that information is, but... That's what I've heard. So that's what I'm going with. Alright. Very close to Prince of Darkness. I'm surprised we haven't lost more lives on this map, to be honest. This map usually does give me quite a bit of problems. But maybe I've just gotten used to it now. Gone a little bit better. Gotten that, just that little bit better at the game. God, if they gave me Flooded Valley, though, I'd still lose. Like nine times out of ten. God, Flooded Valley's a pain. That, in my opinion, Flooded Valley is one of the worst maps in this game. Alongside Bazaar. God, I hate Bazaar. Bazaar absolutely just gives me the craps. Can't handle it. Just can't. Just cannot. Also, does anyone know what... Oh, never mind. I guess they fixed it. Because at one point, when you got Prince of Darkness, this little buff appeared on every other tower, regardless of what tower it was. And I always wondered what that was, but I guess it's uh, not important now. I think it's meant to be the buff that improves other necromancers, enhances all other ones. But uh, I guess they fixed it, so it doesn't really matter. Cool, cool, cool. I also think we need a little more Moab heavy damage. So I'm going to put the classic, uh, a classic boss fight tower down. Throw down some sticky bombs to just help the cause a little more over on this side. But yeah, this round should be nothing compared to the, uh, the unpopped army, let alone the, uh, what's it called? Prince of Darkness. That's the one. That's the one. But yeah, we should be absolutely chilling now till round 80. Um, and then that'll be us done for part one. Part two will most certainly be more difficult. Just because of Peninsula and Cargo. Actually, Cargo's not too bad. I find I'm a lot better on Cargo than I am on Peninsula. And we do have a lot of boats and a few snipers. So we have adequate methods of farming. So, I think if we just time our farming right, we should be perfectly fine. There shouldn't really be too much of an issue on, uh, on cargo, at least. Peninsula's a whole nother story. That's going to take me a couple goes, at least. But, uh, we'll see how we go. Also, aside from, uh, aside from Stardew Valley, one of my friends for Christmas got me... He likes to get me annoying things for Christmas, like things that are annoying but still sort of entertaining, you know? So like last year for Christmas he got me, no not last year, because technically last year was 2021, oh shit. Um, in 2020 for Christmas, he got me a 3000 piece jigsaw puzzle, all with pictures of Deadpool on it. So it's just a massive jigsaw puzzle. And, like, it's not just Deadpool, it's, like, all his different variations and different universe things. And he knows I love Deadpool. So, I, I appreciated that. But 3,000 pieces. And if you know Deadpool, it means 99% of that puzzle is just red and black. And so I've got a 3,000 piece red and black puzzle, essentially. And I have not done it. I have not. And then... For this year, or rather, last year's Christmas present, last month's Christmas present, that's a little more accurate, um, he bought me a, uh, a calendar, right? You think, oh yeah, calendar, that's hard to piss someone off with, that's, it's hard to have both enjoyment out of and annoyance with, um, but it's not just any calendar, no, no, you might be thinking, oh, is it one of those those puzzle calendars where every day you have to solve a different puzzle, like a crossword or a word sleuth. No, no, I would consider that very fun, and I think I'd be able to do that without complaining every day. He instead got me... Don't get me wrong, this is dope, right? This is cool. 
It just takes a lot of time and effort, and I'm already struggling with it. Right? Are we good? Okay, we're good. Just checking. Um, he got me a calendar where for every day of the year, well, for most days of the year, I think it's at 300 plus, not exactly, 365, um, you take out the date or the piece of paper with the, uh, the current date on it and the next date or the day after, tomorrow's date, is instructions on how to turn the previous day's date into a different paper airplane every single day. And so with every day that passes, I take out the current date, I fold it into a paper airplane, using the instructions it gives me of course, and it's meant to be like 300 plus different variations of paper airplane. Now, I've not really been like a massive paper airplane fan in the past, but I do appreciate them, and I do appreciate all the work that goes into making really complex ones, and ones that fly really far and are really solid and difficult to sort of mess up sort of thing, right? I, I appreciate all the effort that goes into those, but... I've been told that every, like, paper airplane after day one is supposed to be slightly harder than the day before. And I'm still in January, I'm struggling with this shit. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I love it, right? When I'm done building it, I absolutely just go into like the hallway of my house, throw it down, nine times out of ten it nose dives, the other one time it like does a right turn and slams itself into the wall. But it is quite fun, actually doing it. I do love it, but at the same time I am slowly learning to hate it because they're getting more difficult. And it makes it all the more fun to uh, turn the previous day's instructions into something I can throw. Anyway, uh, that, that kind of uh, took me on a bit of a tangent there, but there we go. That's the first two maps done. The Popping Balloons. <sighs> and we've only got Haunted Military Only, Hard Standard on Cargo, and military only on Peninsula. Only to 75 though, so that does help out quite a lot because it takes out 76, 78, 79, and 80. All rounds that I consider to be a pain in the ass. So, we're looking pretty good. Anyway, part two, coming out tomorrow, as usual. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care, everyone.